For more, let's bring in Dr. Alok Patel, ABC News medical contributor and also physician at Stanford Children's Health. So, Alok, hospital beds for children now around 75% capacity, up to 90% in some of the states. That's what we've been reporting. And a lot of pediatric hospital admissions have even hit their highest levels in two years. So tell us what we need to know here, especially parents, um, as maybe our kids don't start to feel well or we think it is something less serious than it is. Kira, I'm glad you framed it that way because simply put, it's really hard for parents in those early stages of a cold to know which direction that disease is gonna go. And with RSV, the majority of kids are going to see the virus at some point before they turn to, and in the majority of kids, it will run its course like a common cold. But in a small percentage of cases, what actually happens is that upper respiratory, those symptoms that we all know and love, like sneezing, coughing, runny nose, and all that can actually go downward into a kid's lung cause inflammation, and that can lead to things like viral pneumonia or something that a lot of people have heard of, bronchiolitis. At that point, parents may notice something like fast breathing, children having trouble moving air or using their chest muscles to breathe. And with these symptoms, there should be no hesitation. Parents should call an ER, a doctor's office, get their kid to a medical attention right away. Is there anything we be, can be giving our kids though right now? Say it hasn't reached that point yet, right? Where it's gotten deep into the lungs. Well, regarding what we talked about with these three viruses, as we just heard, as we know, two of them, influenza and COVID-19, do have vaccines available for kids. Influenza, kids as young as six months should get their annual shot. Parents should also make sure their kids get their COVID-19 vaccine. For common colds, when parents see those early symptoms, three really important things that all parents can do is, first of all, encourage your kids to stay hydrated. When kids are congested and they no longer want to eat or drink, dehydration is a real concern. Also, cold humidifiers can help loosen up some of that junk, that mucus, and help kids clear it also. And last but definitely not least, those nasal suctioning devices. We've seen those blue bulbs that people use in young babies. There's also other devices where parents can actually help clear that congestion. Those work wonders. I am convinced that I prevented our toddler from being admitted for bronchiolitis last winter by using one of them myself. Okay, there you go. Well, then, if you did it, <laughs> then we need to do it. Yes, exactly. Uh, and yeah, I think we still have one of those from when they were babies. Um, so how contagious is RSV and, and can adults catch it as well? So here's what's tricky. RSV is very contagious. RSV, unlike COVID-19, does not spread in that aerosolized fashion where you have to wear an N95, RSV can actually spread from larger droplets and people can transmit RSV through their eyes, nose or from surfaces. So it's really important that you wash your hands and wash down any surfaces, especially if someone's been sick in your area. Now, regarding who is most at risk of catching how transmissible it is and if adults can get it, Older adults or adults with underlying heart or lung disease are also at increased risk of severe illness or hospitalizations. But Kira, here's what's tricky. If an adult has what they think is a general cold with mild symptoms, they could actually have RSV and then transmit that to a baby where that baby may have much more severe symptoms, especially if it's a young baby, a baby with underlying diseases, or a baby who was premature. So that's why any adults out there, if you have a cold and you even think it's not a big deal, stay away from babies. Okay. And officials are worried that hospitals could be further strained uh, due to this triple-demic threat, so, as, especially as we hit winter peak. So anything that we can do right now, just preventative measures. Well, the most important preventative measures we have talked about over and over again, you and I, Kira, and that's making sure that people are getting their vaccines, they're doing everything they can to stay healthy, including hand washing, staying well if you're sick, encouraging people to do the same thing, even things like wearing a mask, if you are, have symptoms and you have to travel out in public or be around other people, can help lower these things. Make sure that you're touching base with doctors about things that you can do at home. We all have to do what we can to protect ourselves because when we report these numbers, Kira, about increased hospitalization from respiratory viruses, there's a trickle-down effect in our public health system. We've heard stories of elective surgeries or other admissions being diverted from a children's hospital or parents having to wait for hours on end. And I will tell you from personal experience, it is painful to have to send a parent away to another hospital when they come to a hospital that might be right next to them or more convenient for them as well. That's what we're trying to avoid. All right, Dr. Alok Patel, thank you so much for your advice, your time. We'll stay on top of it. Thanks, Doc. Thank you.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.